let me show you how to create dumbbell plots like this. These are great for comparing two different values over time or between groups or whatever else you can come up with. And the nice thing about them is that they scale incredibly well. It doesn't matter whether you have five dumbbells or 25, dumbbells are still pretty legible. Sure, in a chart like this, there are still some tweaks that could be improved. And I show you how that works in my upcoming data visualization course that you can find in the description if you're curious. But even with 25 dumbbells, Comparisons are still easier than with paired bar charts, which are unfortunately often used in such scenarios. And once your dumbbells are set up, you can also make them into arrows instead. It's really easy to make that change in ggplot, so let's figure out how to create the dumbbells plot first, and then I will also show you how to make the arrows happen. Here I've set up a new quarter document with two code chunks. One of them is hidden and it generates this selected country data set that contains information about life expectancies for different countries in the year 1952 and 2007. The underlying data set that was used to extract this data is the Gapminder data set from the Gapminder package. You can find the full code that generates all of this via the link in the description. Now, to create a dumbbell plot, we need two parts. One part is the lines of the dumbbells and the other part is the point of the dumbbells. So we are going to send our data set to ggplot and map the x-axis to the life expectancy and the y-axis to the country. This will be the same for both the lines and the points that we have to plot. And then we are going to start out by plotting the points. Here we want to have them differently colored depending on the year, so we map year to the fill aesthetic. But as we have used fill instead of color, we actually have to set shape to 21 to see the colors. Ah, nice, there they are. But they're still kind of hard to see. So let's increase the size and also let's change the outline color and increase the outline's stroke. Nice, we already have one part of the dumbbells done. Time to connect the dots. See what I did there? This is an educational video and we're connecting the dots. Magnificent, isn't it? Anyway, creating the lines couldn't be easier. Just throw in GM line and make sure that this layer comes before the points layer. That way, the points are on top of the lines and not the other way around. And then there's not really much we have to do here. But still, we can match the colors and make the line a little bit thicker. Awesome, we have created dumbbell plots, but don't tune out just yet. Let's be honest, this still looks like crap. Maybe we should put in a little bit of effort into this. So to make this into a respectable chart, let us change the theme and we should increase the font size so that we can actually read the thing. While we're at it, let's use a nicer font too. All right, this looks more respectable, but we can throw in a little bit of more low effort tweaks like adding labels. Let's first add a title. This will help us to figure out Okay, what is even the point of this chart? And in this case, I want to highlight that almost all of these countries that we see here increased their life expectancy over the last 55 years, but Zimbabwe didn't. They actually decreased their life expectancy. Did you notice that? Did you notice that the colored points are in the opposite order for Zimbabwe? If not, good for you. You have learned something here because this is something you have to watch out for with dumbbell plots. Sorting is especially important for this chart type. Otherwise, it's very easy to miss that the order of the colored points changed, especially if Zimbabwe would have been right in the middle of all the other dumbbells. So let me show you a way to avoid that mistake. But it's also good that we have nailed down our insight that we want to generate with this chart. So let's continue with our labels and add an X label and throw out the Y label because everyone knows that these are countries. In any case, let's just also make sure that the legend title is spelled with a capital letter. Normally, I wouldn't use a legend here, but we want to work on a dumbbell plot and not on a legend, so we're just going with it. But if you want to learn my favorite strategy to avoid huge legend, check out the video that should pop up right about now. Next, let's kick out a lot of grid lines. There's way too many of them. And then we can do the same thing on the x-axis. Well, look at that. The plot looks much less cluttered now. Therefore, what we need to work on next is sorting this mess. And before we do that, let me just throw in my usual reminder to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for that. Now let's sort the dumbbells. And to do that, we have to sort our data set accordingly. So let's take our data set and first let us sort the rows by using a range to sort the rows by country and then by year. This makes sure that for each country, we always get first the data for one year and then the data for the later year and not the other way around. This will be important for the calculations later on. Now, if you paid attention carefully, you notice that it already was sorted like this in our initial data set. But I threw in this arrange function in there anyway to make this very obvious by hard coding the row order because this is something we need. Next, let us compute how much the life expectancy changed for each country by computing the difference of the life expectancy. 
Here, diff is just a function that computes the difference of two numbers. But of course, for this to work, we need to make sure that mutate works separately for each country. So we're going to use a grouped mutate. Using this change in life expectancy, we can sort our country column by reordering its factor levels with FCT reorder and our newly computed column. Now, all we have to do is to use this new data set instead to sort our dumbbells. Ah, this doesn't look super great. We sorted by the change in life expectancy, but what we really wanted to do is to just make sure that all countries that increase their life expectancy are grouped together and all that decrease their life expectancy are grouped together as well. So what we actually want is a new column that is helpful to order the dumbbells and then we actually just take the change of life expectancy and multiply a negative one or a one with the first value from the life expectancy vector. Since we sorted the rows, we know that this first value corresponds to life expectancy in 1952. And if we look at this new data set, we can see that our new column now has the value from the first year inside of it. And in the case of Zimbabwe, this would be a negative value here because it is the only country that decreased its life expectancy. Therefore, we need to sort our country by this new variable. And now this looks much better. Here, our dumbbells are sorted in ascending order of the first year value. But also Zimbabwe is at the lower end of the chart because its order of the points in the dumbbell is different. Similarly, we could also sort by the second year by simply using the second entry in our life expectancy vector. And here we could also see how important this if else part is. If we leave out this part, right now we're lucky and nothing changed because the second value actually fits well into the correct sorting. But if we look at the life expectancy from 1952, Zimbabwe would be in the middle. And therefore it might be hard to spot that this actually has a different order than all the other dumbbells. So that is why we're going to put this back in and we're just going to format it like this. Now I promised you arrows instead of dumbbells as well, so let's make this change happen. It is actually pretty easy to do this in ggplot. We just have to change gm line to gm path. And in the aesthetics of that layer, we have to map the color to whether or not the change in life expectancy was negative. Of course, this only works if we remove the color that we hard coded. Then we get colored lines. So we can also remove the points as we don't need them anymore. So let's just comment them out here. And to make those lines into actual arrows, we have to simply use the arrow argument. But out of the box, this looks incredibly ugly. That's why we format them a little bit by changing the length of the arrows and changing the type to closed instead of open. Now, in this situation, we don't really need a legend, so we're going to get rid of it by setting legend position to none. And then we have an arrow chart that shows you even more clearly that Zimbabwe actually decreased its life expectancy in the last 55 years. Of course, there's still more stuff you could do in this chart, like actually showing which years you compare here, but I think the idea on how to create a chart like this is clear now. In my upcoming video course, I will show you how to make such a chart more insightful. If you're curious, you can check out that via the link in the description. And in the description, you will also find a link to the tutorial that shows you how to avoid huge legend. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.